Big show today. Don't miss it. We've got things coming up that are going to help save your liberty and also get your mind right. Because, man, the enemy's trying to confuse you. Go to CraigBouchon.com. Latest news. Welcome to Cartel TikTok, folks, where Mexican cartels are allowed to place ads for human traffickers. Wow. Google announced that it now reserves the right to scrape all the content posted online to enhance AI tools. We're going to discuss that today. You're not going to believe what they think they can do. And you may just want to cancel everything you have with them. Coming this fall, AI Chatbot will teach an intro course at Harvard. No problem there. Hey, folks, big show today. We'll see you in just a moment. Welcome back to the show, folks. Big stuff. Look at the right there, right in front of you. If you're watching the show, you can see my website. Okay. Big news. We have great writers. It's updated every single day. It is top of mind. It's it's set up so you get pertinent information. And then we talk about that pertinent pertinent information on this program. And if you're listening to us right now on a podcast, always know that it's archived. You can go to the Craig Bouchon show. You can go under watch and you can see the show that you were listening to. Don't you love this technology? But look, there's a lot going on. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. Eric Thompson, the producer extraordinaire. How are you? Doing great. Thank you. Uh, big stuff. Latest news. You know, just like I talked about uh, coming into the show there's a lot of things going on, a lot of moving parts, ladies and gentlemen. There are there's so many things happening. You're getting inundated from all directions. And our goal is to let you, uh, uh, we, we want to slow it down and let you absorb it in a way that, that, that can make sense. And then you can do something about it because that's the key. Knowing the issue is one thing, but then you got to do something about the issue. And more about AmericaICAN.com, and that's what we're going to do about it. But where do you want to start this out, Eric? What do we got? What do we got on the uh, on the docket today? Well, we've been we've been talking about how with the border being open and Biden signing these treaties and you know giving the world access to us openly and to, and, uh, and stealing China stealing our technology, everything is just it's kind of like open season on the U.S. And here, I thought we would dive into there's some money massive amount of money and power that's behind this we've talking about we've spoken about the world economic forum but i wanted to show you a video of larry fink who is the mastermind of the blackrock financial who is forcing companies like you've spoken about like why why would any but why would target want to cancel a mark levin popular right. book or why would budweiser want to alienate most of their customer base it's because Larry Fink at BlackRock Financial, who is responsible for coordinating all their funding, he said in a video a few years ago that BlackRock CEO said investment firm forces companies to change behavior on diversity. Does that sound like capitalism, Craig? No. What this is, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, years ago, uh, again, I think it was Glenn Beck who coined the phrase, you know, spooky dude. You know, George Soros is spooky dude. Well, I think George Soros, he's, well, f first of all, George Soros has no money at all. He's a pauper. He, he's, he's, he could be living in a tent in San Francisco uh, when you compare him to, the, to BlackRock. It's the United States of America, as far as wealth. It is China, and then it's BlackRock. So the new spooky dude is this guy right here. Play it. Yeah, seventeen trillion dollars is what these guys are managing, and here is seventeen trillion trillion. This is a company, a, an investment financial company, one company, that yeah. kind of money. Here and here is the here is the mastermind saying that they're going to force compliance. Point of that's a, that's an investment criteria for you. Well, behaviors are going to have to change, and this is one thing we're going to we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. 
54 uh, percent of the incoming class are women. We, we added four more points in terms of diverse uh, employment this year. And it, if it, you know, what we are doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted, okay? We're doing the same thing. And so it's just, it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. And that's not just not recruiting. It is development, as Ken said. And ultimately, it's still going to take time, but I am just as much shocked as Ken is that we have not seen more opportunities. And we're going to have to force change. What do you think of that, Craig? He's going to, they're forcing change. Force change. I can't believe that we're just not seeing more opportunity. I can't believe those pesky Americans just aren't falling in line. I can't believe that crazy little piece of paper that was written over 200 years ago, it, getting in our way. The, 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 what is going on? We are worth now $17 trillion. We positioned ourselves to be in everything. We are some of the largest percentage stockholder in, in, in hundreds, if not thousands of companies around the world. How could this not be happening faster? Why? Well, you can see it happening all over Europe. You can see the CCPs behind it because they're all in bed together. You can see what's going on in Ukraine and, and J.P. Morgan and BlackRock looking at this opportunity. Keep blowing it up, folks. That way we can rebuild it. It's such a beautiful thing. You know, these people are out in the light now. I've said multiple times on this show, ladies and gentlemen, that Donald Trump's presidency, Donald Trump's presidency was the thing that had to happen. He took this imperfect man who has many flaws, but he also has tremendous strengths as well. I said years ago that he's indestructible. And what I mean by that is what you're seeing, no matter what these people throw at him, He's there. It kind of goes back to the to the Star Spangled Banner show that we did on the 4th, where they kept bombarding and bombarding the fort, trying to blow up the American flag. And it, why is that thing not falling? What is happening? Well, back then, folks, it was those pesky people. Before there was a constitution, it was, the, it was something inside them about liberty and freedom and free will. Okay? that made them keep that flag up. These same people are just like, this fink is just like uh, King George III. Why are they not falling? Why is it not happening faster? Because the reality is, folks, if Hillary Clinton would have got elected, We'd be much farther down this road because you wouldn't know anything about the, uh, all the issues in the government. You wouldn't know any. They wouldn't have to show any of their cards. They were showing you in the poker hand, the hand of uh, uh, their poker hand of life. They were showing you threes and fives and nines. Look, nothing, to, nothing bad here. You don't have to worry about us. We have a weak hand. Uh, no, 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 no. They had aces up their sleeves. Okay, they had the ace of spades there, ready to bring it out. So. Do I think it's a good thing? Absolutely, that we get to see what these people say. It's archived. You're going to see it here on the Craig Bouchon Show. It's just that simple. So you have to ask yourselves a question, folks. What can I do about it? Because George Washington said, when he, it's the same thing that George Washington said about how you'll end slavery. You'll end slavery through the legislative body coming up through the people in in voting it out of existence, making it illegal, it has to come from the, the, the inside of this country. And that's how this is going to have to be stopped. This is uh, horrific what's going on, Eric, and it's only going to be stopped by we the people. Yeah, because you can see that companies like Target are complying for their ESG uh, to, uh, to BlackRock's force changes. Uh, they're dropping a Mark Levin book simply because it might offend somebody. 
Well, Mark Levin's confusing to me. Mark Levin, uh, I completely agree. Years ago when I was on air in Austin, Texas, he was talking about uh, post-constitutional times. He's very close friends with Sean Hannity, and, uh, but he's on Fox News and he stayed on Fox News. And Fox News has done horrific things for the First Amendment uh, of the Constitution. But yet he's still on. I think he broadcasts on Sundays, but I think he simulcasts, uh, you know, his show through the Fox network. So for, in one minute, he's talking about all the bad things that are going on in the world. And the next minute, he's on a station that's actually been doing that to us. Oh, I know. I know. It's it's confusing. It's just go, it's show- yes, they're dropping the book because he's saying the things that doesn't go against their that does go against their agenda. It's, it's yeah, just that simple. He said that um, he said that the reason was is that it, uh, it it might be that they may be offended simply by the title. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Do you have that picture anywhere you can pull up of my studio from years ago? Right on this point, look for that real quick if you have okay. it there, uh, because he's exactly right. Well, the we have the, my, what's that? I have the I have the picture with you in front of the studio. That's, it. that's we, the one I want. Pull, pull okay. that up for me, please. I'll, I'll look for it while you're talking. Yeah. Okay. So the reason I'm having him pull this up, folks, is that this is exactly the truth. What he said is that it offends them. The title itself, you know, obviously they weren't raised with sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. They obviously have no idea what that is. They didn't, they didn't learn that, uh, that, that, ch- that children-based uh, philosophy that you're supposed to learn that, look, you can say what you want to me. It doesn't mean it's the truth, okay? It doesn't mean it has to hurt me. And it, it, but you have the right to say it, most everything, uh, because this is a free America and you have a First Amendment to the Constitution. There are some limitations, but they're very limited limitations. So the words that we say, why do I say the truth is not hate speech? Why would I even think about saying that, man, at least 12 years ago? The truth is not hate speech. And matter of fact, look at this. I still have, here's one of my stickers here. Look at this. The truth is not hate speech. The Craig Bouchon show. Let me tell you something. It was another one of my phrases I used years ago. But the truth is not hate speech and the First Amendment. All right? And it's because uh, that's the very thing that separates us from the rest of the world. You can see right now all throughout Europe, up in Canada you as well, you can't speak your mind. Heck, some places will arrest you if you speak your mind. Our founders knew this type of tyranny uh, is is going to be, has been rampant in the past, though it it gets quelched and pushed down a little bit in some countries. It'll come right back again if you do not have rights given to you by something greater than mankind. We're endowed by our creator, why? So when you say words, the, the, the authority you have to say what you feel is the truth, and even, folks, if you're wrong, even if you say something that's incorrect, when you have open dialogue, you have the ability to go back and forth with each other. Uh, and, and that's why I like uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., by the way, for some of the things that he says, because I think he'll have a, re- a, a reasonable conversation with you. Here's a, pull the picture up right now. Well, I have it up here. This is the only place I can get it without being... But um, that's as big as it'll go. Yeah, but I can I'll have to load it on something for next time. Well, <laughs> there you'd have to zoom in, folks. But what the arrow points at it says the truth is not hate speech. And that was in a strip mall uh, in, outside of Austin, Texas, years ago. And somebody pulled their vehicle up who was going to a business next door and complained to the business next door that, oh, I can't believe it said the word hate. It just triggered me. It made me feel so bad. Well, the owner I knew at the time goes, well, no, it says the truth is not hate speech. No, 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 no. All I see is hate. And and that really affects me. And that needs to come down. So the title, the truth is not hate speech. It's an entire phrase. They'll want to pick out, can't say hate. So the whole thing's bad. That's how it works. That's the game. And that's what's happened to Mark Levin. And when you listen to these people, first of all, did I take it down? Nope. Do I care what she said? Nope. Do I think that it matters what she said? Yes. I don't care that she said it because she has the right to say it. But what they want is to have those, her, what she feels become your law. 
how she, her emotion trumps your First Amendment. Okay? Because they, they want emotional-based reactions and laws on the books that get rid of intellectual thought, critical thinking, and deductive reasoning. That's what they want, ladies and gentlemen. So, Mark well, Levin, look, I get it. Happened to me a long time ago. Well, on that mindset, I remember the Supreme Court just ruled that they, that group of people that wanted you to take that down mm -hmm. also wanted a, a woman web designer to make a website for a gay marriage, even though she objected to it. They took it all the way to the Supreme Court to try to force her to do something against her will. Same with the bakers. There was bakers the same way. To the Supreme Court, though, this That's isn't right. like you, you like they did to you in in Austin saying that guy's bad. They took it all the way to the highest court of the land. Well, they did that because they were prosecuted. The law said, uh, if I understand that story correctly, it would be like that situation happened to me. Then the police get involved, and then the attorney general gets involved in that in the city, and then they say, "Craig, you have to take that down." And then I would say, "No, I don't." And they would say, "We're going to fine you. We're going to we're going to arrest right, you." Right. And then now I'm a victim, right? Because remember, there always has to be a victim if you got to go if you're going to court. Judge, the court system doesn't want to hear anything if there's no victims. So. I, I would have been a victim and I would have went to court and I would have went to the Supreme Court and I would have won. It didn't happen because they didn't push it that far. But that's how it works. So. But if Hillary, if Hillary would have won and the three justices were liberal instead of Trump's, what do you think would have happened? I think that. Uh, Because of the, the we, new civil rights, right, it, that the, the community right. has? If, if we thank the Lord, folks, that Hillary Clinton did not become president because we would be so close, if not already, in an American Revolution 2.0. I don't know what it would have looked, what it looked like. I don't know, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of strange weapons out there today because you have digital media and things like that. But I think that it would have been very, very, very bad. And I think God knew that. I think he knew. So he's giving us a chance. Of, look, bringing Trump in, uh, Donald Trump is, I've said it before, he's like Moses to the people, the tens of millions of people who vote for him that are part of the MAGA world. And that's a fact. And they feel like that, that he's given them hope and that he's freed them from this tyranny. And they really are, were, it was tyrannical what happened to them. The, the government shifted against them and allowed, uh, you know, the exporting of all their jobs. That's why we covered yesterday, if you missed the show, you got to watch it, about what's going on with electric vehicles. Electric vehicles is, is a bomb, a nuclear bomb been dropped into our economy, and people aren't thinking. They're reacting. How quick can I shift? Oh, Biden administration said there's tons of money. Let's go get it. Let's go get the free money. Let's go. Okay, shift from the traditional automobile and the ICE engine and the internal combustion engine, get uh, uh, internal combustion engine, known as ICE, folks. Move to BEV, B-E-V, a lot of acronyms, folks battery electric vehicles no folks hey as a matter of fact remember we we discussed we discussed 2030 you know two sh two of the last three shows we've covered t the 2030 project united nations and the world economic forum and we talked about how uh, one of the one of their uh, uh methods to their madness is you're not going to own anything you'll just rent it well here's a perfect example a little history lesson here auto nation is one or maybe number two now uh, largest automotive sales uh, company in the United States of America. Employs thousands and thousands of people. Well, the CEO now is a former head, big wig, from Stellantis Group. Stellantis Group wants to destroy franchises in the United States of America. Another bomb, another little mini nuke being dropped into the United States got to get rid of the franchise. And they're coming after the automobile industry in the United States of America, folks. And you need to know why this is important. You ever notice if you're looking for a car, you drive, there's not one there. You can't say, where are the new cars at? Where are all the new cars? 
Well, they're not there, and they're not there on purpose. And and if some do show up, hooray, maybe we're going back to the way it was. No, we're not, folks. No, we're not. They're just playing the game right now. Keep the machine moving just enough. You know, give people just enough economic food so they can survive. Okay, and pull that back up, please. That uh, autonomy, I think it's called. Is it called autonomy or autonomy? Yeah, autonomy. Autonomy. Dot com. So autonomy, folks. Who are these people? Remember, Auto Nation now in, the, in North America is he, is now being headed by over since the last couple of years by the former bigwig from Stellantis Group. Stellantis Group canceled the franchise agreements in Europe. And it was easy for them to do because they don't have franchise laws like we do in the United States of America. And they're coming after the franchise. Why? Because the franchise is another piece in the way. They got to scoop that money back the, 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 from the World Economic Forum. And then, and folks, this is all, all connected to ESG, environmental social governance. It's so hard, right? All these pieces have to align like cogs on a wheel and a gear. They can't hit like this. They have to line up. And so it's hard to track. So my goal is to try to bring these pieces in so you understand how they're aligning to go after your liberty. And remember, they have to take away your wealth to do it. If you have a lot of money in your pocket and, 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 and you can fund a strong military, that's a bad thing. If you can fund defending yourself in the legal system, that's a bad thing. If you can fund having your own vehicle drive where you want, when you want, how you want, that's a bad thing. They're trying to teach people the next generation, the generation after me and, 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 and then now almost two generations now, little kids, that you don't need to, owe, to own anything. Matter of fact, it's bad for the world. And it's bad for you if you own something. Here we go. So who's behind autonomy? AutoNation. So AutoNation, now big wig through Stellantis, is now come inside the United States and saying, let's go to the front page, scroll all the way up, subscribe with just your phone, folks. And oh, look at they'll go all the way up. Look at her. She's so young and vibrant. She's very pretty. Uh, she has her little friend over there uh, that they're, look, more flexible than a lease, less expensive than a long-term car rental, and you don't have to go to one of those pesky auto dealerships removes, to get a car. Look at this. Removes the hassles of owning. Removes. removes. What a hassle. Insurance, owning, maintenance. Oh, it's so miserable to have a car. It's one of the worst things I've ever had to do <laughs> in my life, folks. A root canal. A car. Yeah, everything. Just going to get car root canal. It's terrible. But let but let me let me really let you understand why this is so important. Auto Nation is also the biggest backer backer of autonomy, which is weaponizing itself against the very kind of dealerships that Auto Nation owns. So in their advertising, they're going after their own product. Huh, why would that be? Why would a behemoth company have a CEO in place that comes from Stellantis that destroyed the franchises in Europe? They're trying to do it right here in the U.S. right now, folks. They have legislation right now. They're trying, they're lobbying in multiple states around this country to modify and move away from the franchise and go to a completely different model called an agency. Now, the agency is such great news for all those franchises that spent, the, all those, uh, those American citizens, folks, small uh, auto dealerships, medium auto dealerships have to go away. They have to get gobbled up by who? These gigantic groups like Stellantis, AutoNation, uh, I could go a Sonic group. All of these organizations are set up to destroy, to buy up and eliminate the small mom pa franchise. Why? Because this is their game plan. They're not even afraid to show you that their model is they believe it isn't like they're saying, look, guys, we've given you a great opportunity. This might be something you want to do. Check it out. It's pretty cool. No, it's more than that. They're weaponizing it. They're saying, oh, why would you go into one of our other dealerships that do it the old way when you can do it the new way? So if you, so 
if you had, if you owned an independent dealership that was under AutoNation, which there aren't any, they're all AutoNation. It's one big giant uh, uh, company. Why would you? You'd be going. You'd be picking up the phone. Hello. Why are you putting us down while you're trying to promote your part of the business? What? There's something's not right here. But of course, they don't have any franchises. They're a big company, so they're showing you. But you probably haven't heard about it, folks. And that's what we do. We do the research here so you can see these things. So they're coming after you. don't see any 65-year-old dudes up there going, gosh, I sure hope I could uh, get my car that way. No, no, folks. They're coming after the next generation. They're coming after your kids and your grandkids. And, and, and if you're watching this show and you're 35 years old, they, they may already have you. You just tuned in because you've stumbled across it. Because I said, why I like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. So a lot of Democrats are chiming in, whoa, what is he talking about? And then you're like, whoa, what else is he saying? Folks, they're coming after you. Don't believe what they're saying when it comes to that this won't hurt you. They're ta- they want your liberty. They want you to own nothing. They want you to be born to this world with nothing. And they want you to die with nothing. While they build tremendous wealth... As you're paying rent on their cars, rent on their houses, rent on their apartments, rent on their condos, they're generating tremendous wealth and you're building no equity and you have nothing to transfer to your children or to whoever you want. So, hey, did you get that picture pulled up? I think I see it back there. Yeah, it's in the background, yeah. Yeah, can, can, can we, I want to, that's, so social credit, bank blocks account for parents' organization opposed to child transgenderism. What is that? What well, is that? They're forcing, a bank is forced, and the Metro Bank is forcing a, uh, or they blocked an, a, a, a group that set up an account or tried to set up an account to block or oppose child transgender surgeries in England. Mm-hmm. Because that's where that's where that's where they're getting their most traction at the WF, but basically the social credit score, the ESG, the bank was forced to not allow this group to set up an account that's because right. they would be punished by BlackRock for doing such a terrible thing, and that is that forced compliance. So if if the banks are forced to comply and to to advance the agenda of the globalists, then you and I have to be very careful. Oh, who we bank with? Well, I think J.P. Morgan, J.P. Morgan Chase, right? Uh, BlackRock. We talked about what they're doing. This great opportunity that's going on in Ukraine. As you, me, we the people are funding this war. We are backing this war, this proxy war against uh, who? Well, against communism. That's really what it is. There, there's a buffer being built right there, right? You've got weak Europe. Weak is all get out. That's why Stellantis could just bulldoze them and get rid of their franchises. And come up with all new great idea. Uh, so, and it doesn't stop there, by the way. Google, Google wants to be master of the universe. If we go to pull up the, the front page of the website or pull up what Google's trying to do right now, because uh, we have a few minutes left in this show, I want to talk about Google announced that it now reserves the right to scrape content posted online to enhance AI tools. All content. All in caps. (laughs) So all that free stuff. Remember back in the day, oh my gosh, great news. It's such great news. Google is giving us what I used to have to pay for. I have free, let's see, I have free email. I have free Word document stuff I can do. I have free, free, free. It's all all free. Google is so awesome. And Facebook, too. I can go on there and share it, put all my data in there, and it's free. And they don't charge me anything at all. Folks, if they're not charging you, you are the product, ladies and gentlemen. If they're not charging you, you are the product. And now, well, those chickens have come home to roost. I think there was Reverend Wright that said that. Not sure. Uh, But those chickens right here is your data. Your data. They have more. They know more about you than you do. See, AI doesn't forget you do. You, I do. Can't quite remember what I said, I don't know, nine years ago today. 
AI could find it if it's out there in seconds and go, oh, here you go, Craig. Boop, this is what you said. Oh, now me, I don't care. But a lot of these politicians uh, are going to care. AI, folks, is uh, what they're talking about. They want their chat. Isn't it chat GPT? Well, yeah, there, there follows a class action lawsuit against it for gathering users information without telling them. So Google says, fine, we'll change our policy, our new uh, privacy policy to say that we are going to take that information. We're going to use it. So, yeah, they reacted to a lawsuit and chat uh, GPT now will be getting every single piece of information online to be used for its development. That's right. So it's scraping. It's scraping everything that's out there. OK, so think of your memory, right? Your memory's back. there. like, oh, man, what was, what was that guy's name? I'm really bad with names, by the way. So if there's somebody I met and, and I didn't get to know him really well, and then I see them, you know, two weeks later. Heck, I could maybe see him two days later. And I go, what? I can't remember that person's name. Well, AI, I had a little AI in my ear. Boop, and, it, and it can read because I got little scanners on my glasses. Or heck, maybe it's tapped into my neural link and it sees uh, that person. Oh, Craig, that is uh, Bob Steifeld. Made up the name. So, that's Bob Steinfeld. You met him on this day. This is what you talked about. Pop, 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 pop. Hey, wh- oh my gosh. Thank you, AI. But it also can be used for very, very, very notoriously bad things. And it's also going to eliminate, by the way, jobs. It's going to eliminate school teachers. It's going to eliminate if you're an accountant. It's going to eliminate if you're a manager out there and all you do every day is kind of go into a computer and you got all these computer screens and you're typing away and you're trying, you never even get up out of your desk anymore. You're trying to figure out, oh, I got to get this done. I got to get my spreadsheet done and uh, I'll get it all done and I can maybe possibly keep my job and I'm going to be so excited about it. And uh, uh, no, what's happening is is that every keystroke and everything that you do, they're tapped into, all right? And AI is learning it. And then soon you're gonna have, this is what's gonna happen. AI is gonna come in as your friend. AI is gonna come in, just assist you. And then it's gonna make your job so much easier. It really is. And look how much you can get done. And then all of a sudden you have to do less and you have to do less. Hey, do you mind checking AI to make sure that it didn't make any mistakes in the things that you've been doing for the last 20 years at your desk because you've put on 50 pounds and drink way too much coffee and uh, uh, have a very unhealthy lifestyle because you are now glued to this digital stuff? Well, really, their job is to extract that information from you. You're teaching. So when you go in and you go, oh, no, AI did that mistake. AI did that. See, AI is not that good. Look at the mistakes it's made. Well, it only makes it once, folks. It only makes that mistake once. And then when you go in and you fix that mistake, it learned it, boom, and it never forgets. Does that make sense, Eric? It does. I mean, uh, while Microsoft's laying off 10,000 employees because of AI took their jobs, uh, mm-hmm. This chat GPT um, is targeting removing education teachers. That's why Harvard is going to be having an AI oh, teacher. Oh, that's first right. Class. I forgot I mentioned that from the front page of the Craig Bouchon show. That's Harvard's right. going to teach, but it's just an assistant, right? It's not like really starting, taking the job of a teacher, out. is it, Eric? Well, here it is. So you got AI, you got education, finance. So there yeah. goes your accountants, your CPAs, your financial investors, your software engineers. That'll be look at that human a- being right there teaching AI. Look at that human being. I will help you, AI master. I will well, I help a, you. I have a story, real me. quick story about this. Yeah, I had a guy that was pro, a guy from India when I was doing Uber rides around Google years ago. He was writing the code so that the software would be self-corrective. I said, what happens when the computer doesn't, it can pick itself. It says, I'll be out of a job. And here we are. So they're going to get rid of engineers, journalism. Did you know a lot of the articles being written online or by AI, they're not humans anymore? hundred percent. hundred percent. I think Vanderbilt University got in trouble because they were putting out like letters of love to our people that we care so much about you at uh, Vanderbilt uh, Medical Center or university, wherever it was. And it comes up, oops, they signed it, uh, 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 chat uh, GPT, or they signed it, it's AI. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, yes, of course, the human beings are going to take the least line of resistance, and they're going to eliminate as many things from that path, and that's you and I, folks. If you have a job that has to do with data, 
If you're that manager I was talking about a few minutes ago that you come in and your job every day is to calculate numbers and put spreadsheets together and figure out what this, that, and the other is as far as, you know, what do I need to order next? And what colors do people like? Or what is it? Per- what, which, what are people buying more of? You don't know nothing compared to what AI does. AI knows it before you can even get it on your screen. So what do you do about it? Boy, that's a hard question. That's a hard question to answer. Um, What do you do about it? Is the cat already out of the bag? Is it already too late? Is it is the whole world now so far gone that there's that we're doomed? Uh, What can we do? And because if you look out there in the news, I mean, what else do you have? Because I'm going to have a solution. What else do you have, Eric, that proves this point about AI and where we're going and, and the education system and your, your engineering jobs? Is there anything else? Well, I mean, there has been there for the last 10 years, I've been tracking the uh, robotics, taking the jobs and manufacturing plants. Anything that's repetitive, any type of robotic action is already being replaced in the auto industry and and and. So what, what, what I was going to ask you is, I mean, to me, the only th- I think the number one priority for people needs to be simplifying their lives and getting their cost of living down because it's possible to wake up and your bank boots you and you don't have a job. And you- well, it wasn't that long ago. We didn't really cover it much on the show, but uh, Google or Amazon – uh, don't let didn't let this dude back in his house because he was long wrongly accused of being a racist or something, right? That was yep. an example of this big mothership saying you can't even get into your private property. You can, look, we are the gatekeeper now. It's worse. Right? It, w- it was a it was one of those you entry. You come to the door and there's a camera and it says you know whatever. An Amazon driver came to the door and all it said was, "What can I do for you?" And the driver turned that in as being racist because he was a person of color. Well, of course, victim society. But look, ladies and gentlemen, what do we do about it? The biggest thing that we can do is understand if you live in the United States of America, kiss the ground that you walk on because you have a fighting chance and the world is relying on us. Man, people are worried about being the police of the world. Look what happens when America's weak. I'm so tired of being the police force of the world. It's unbelievable. We can't do it. We got to pull back and build the walls of Jericho. Okay, if that's what we're going to do, then let's do it. If you if you believe that we just need to look, build the, the symbolic walls of Jericho, put all guns out. We don't need anything from anywhere, and we'll live in this uh, utopian space called America. And then I I figured that we'll p- probably become like Babylon, and uh, and and we will be destroyed as well in the future because we that is not what we're supposed to do. We were blessed to have this land, folks. That's why the enemy wants it so bad. That's why China's getting its freaking hooks and claws in with electric vehicles, okay? It's in it, through the education system. And, and TikTok. Through, like, Look, I got like an article TikTok. hooked up right oh, here. So this, TikTok. There it is. Look at you. So think mind. about it. So think about it. TikTok owned by China is allowing cartel to traffic humans in the U.S. That's right. Think about that, and, ladies and gentlemen. And fentanyl coming across the border. So China is our enemy. That's right. And just because they're coming here to help you with some jobs that should have never left and went to China, and now they're right. coming back to give you the jobs back, but now they're controlled by China, hmm, that's not a good thing, folks. See, they've brought you the pain because they had help doing it by crooked leaders in this country and crooked businesses in this country. And then now the good news is, have you felt enough pain yet? Have you felt enough pain? It's like the car business. You, you, have you felt enough pain not being able to get a car? Why? It's a pain in the butt anyway. Look, go to autonomy. You want to go to the store today? No problem. Just hail your autonomy with Just your cell pull phone. Up the app. <laughs> oh my gosh! So. So and, and, and be cool and cool doing it right yeah being cool here oh, um, it's so simple style. she's downtown in this, she lives in this cool you no hassles world. life is so easy now oh I got my app here got my yep. Tesla Model Three I can you get know, a sixty thousand dollar Tesla that I can't afford but I don't you don't have to afford it anymore That's you're just right. renting it 
You're renting it. You're going to go to an app called Autonomy to get rid of your liberty. Oh, Craig, you're being nuts. It's just a rental car place. That's all. It's just like Hertz. Is it? Is it really just like Hertz? They need to go back and listen to the beginning of the show when I talked about what Stellantis has done in Europe, what they're doing now through AutoNation and other groups, and coming to attack your franchise, destroy the franchise in, in, in this country, get rid of the ability for people to have jobs, to make money, to, to, to make commissions. Dear God, can somebody, do they have to make a commission? No one's trustworthy that makes a commission. Look, anything that they can do to get you to hate what we, the people, would call normal. Living in America, there's nothing's perfect, but we are the wealthiest, most prosperous country in the face, on the face of the earth, and in the history of the world, and we have to go down. They have to destroy us, and the way they're going to do it is these multiple de- uh, uh, cuts, like the death of a thousand cuts, right? That's the saying, and, and that's what you're seeing, and you're so busy, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that you, you've been duped. You've been lied to, and they don't care. So when we go back and we show these clips, and really quick, you know how we do? We have this pulled up about from Wall Builders. Um, Can you pull that up, or is it there? If not, we'll have to do it tomorrow. We'll have to do it tomorrow, I think. Okay, we'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow, I've uh, we're going to talk about uh, the difference again. We're going to focus on these people want a democracy, and we are a republic, ladies and gentlemen. And the way that we're going to push back is using the power of what the republic is. And you go to americaican.com. Go to americaican.com. There's a link on my show site as well. Scroll down, click on it. And what you can do, you see an oath back there? That's the candidate oath. It's also the politician oath. If you're currently in office, it's the same thing, right? They need to sign it. You need to read what it is. And then there's the citizen oath that I've showed several times. This is mine. And we're going to... Go after these people and get them to start doing their job. And that's protect you and I, that when I sign it, I can get it laser etched. Like you see it right here, it says Craig Bouchon. Uh, And uh, you need to have one of those. And you need to explain to your children why. You need to talk to each other. Do not be afraid to say you're an American and that you're different and that you're here on purpose and you have value, and you, and you need to uh, exist as a nation, as an independent, sovereign nation, because we have a job to do. These people are trying to take us down, and it is everywhere, everywhere. Here, here is the so, clip from Ball Builders. I was able to pull it up. Oh, you got it. Excellent. So here you go. Check this out, folks. Turn it up, too, if you can. America from ever becoming a democracy. We have to remain a republic. The Founding Fathers gave us a Republican form of government. The Constitution requires we preserve a Republican form of government. And they said they got the Republican form of government out of Exodus 18.21, out of Deuteronomy 1, 15 and 16, and out of Deuteronomy 16, 18. Those are the three passages. And if you remember Deuteronomy 18.21, Deuteronomy 18.21 says, choose out from among you leaders of tens, fifties, hundreds, and thousands. Oh, let's have elections. Let's elect local, county, state, and federal officials. That's not a democracy. That's a republic. And that's why we are called the Republic Pledge Allegiance to the Republic of the United States. No, no, no. We don't ever want to become a democracy. The Bible teaches about that. It's a really bad deal. The Constitution, actually, Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution prohibits America from ever becoming a democracy. We have to remain a republic. The Founding Fathers gave us a republican form of See, government. The Constitution exactly requires right. we preserve a republican form of government. 100%. And they said they got the republican form of government out of Exodus 18.21. That is exactly right. Could not end the show on a better point than that. All right? So understand, folks. We're here on purpose. I do this show every day because I want you to get the information and understand that you are different. You are an American. And that's why we have a that's why we have American. That's why we have this movement that we're starting. And because together we will win. Divided, we will fall. And that's a fact. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. Eric, thank you so much. Another great sure. show. I appreciate it tomorrow right back at it right back at it and we're going to learn more we're going to do more we're going to be more god bless we'll see you soon